I have a story that still haunts me to this day. Let me set the scene for you. I was 7, currently 25, and my mother was dating a man with a daughter who was about 15. Her name was Christy. While she did not live with us, she did stay with us on some weekends. The reason this is important will come into play a little later. I grew up in a moderately isolated area in the south. My mother's house is on about 90 acres, most of it being heavily wooded. For the most part, it was quiet, the type of place most people didn't lock their doors and everyone knew everyone. It was quiet until one sequence of events that shook my community to its core. There was a man, just two streets over from mine, who murdered his girlfriend's entire family, including her, in their home over a dinner about two weeks before this event took place. It was also learned later on that he had also murdered his mother and father in their home, as they were found after his girlfriend's family were. He hadn't been caught, and the local police were working with police in Tennessee as they had been reportings of people citing him there. My mother had gotten a security system installed just to ensure that our home was properly secured. We had alarms on every window and door in our house. On this Saturday, my mother got called into work as she was an apartment manager and there was an emergency that she needed to tend to. Her boyfriend had gone to work early that morning. My mother was very, very nervous about leaving and due to the nature of the emergency, she thought it was best that Christy and I stay home where we were safe. Safe, so she thought. She reluctantly left and let us know that her cell phone was always going to be with her if we needed her. Christy and I promptly set the alarm and made sure that all the doors were locked. My mother had been gone about an hour and we were deep into a movie on Disney and pizza. Suddenly, the alarm started blaring. Christy and I jumped up to see what was going on. On the way to the alarm, you have to pass a very large sliding glass door. What we saw there left us frozen. There was a man prying our door open with a crowbar. He saw us, made eye contact, and quickly ran off into the woods behind my mother's house. I will never forget what he looks like or the sinister look he had in his eyes. We called the police. And then we called my mother, who had already been alerted by the alarm company. My mother actually arrived before the police did, due to how isolated we really were. When we described the man to the police, they immediately knew that it was the man they were looking for. Of course, there was a massive investigation that day of the property and woods surrounding us. In the woods, they found cigarette butts, lots of canned food, soda bottles, and a makeshift tent made from a tarp. The man had been living behind us the entire time and even stealing food from our trash. When he was arrested, which was a few hours after the incident, he had admitted to watching our family to learn our habits, knowing that he would take advantage of the house when no one was there. Even now, as an adult, this event still follows me. It just goes to show you really never know who's watching you. I'm a 25 year old female who lives in a high crime rated city with my boyfriend. I'm currently getting over a double ear infection where my left eardrum broke. I can't hear very well right now because of the infection and the broken eardrum. This is important to remember. My boyfriend left for work like he usually does at 6am and kissed me goodbye. I took a few sick days from my job this week to give my ears a chance to heal so I was still in bed when he left. I fell back asleep for about an hour or so. We sleep with a white noise machine on because we don't like sleeping in complete silence and my boyfriend gets cold with a fan on. Anyway, I'm completely passed out when I hear the neighbor's dog barking next door really loudly. She was going berserk. She sounded like she was about to attack someone. Note, the dog, a German Shepherd, is tied outside right next to my bedroom window on the right side. I can hear a lot better out of that ear right now, so that's how I woke up. I'm usually a heavy sleeper, but she was barking and growling and even scratching at the sliding door. I'm usually a heavy sleeper, but she was barking and growling 
and even scratching in the siding of my house. I woke up and turned my head slightly to the left to better hear the dog. Out of my peripheral vision, I saw a figure dart from the hallway outside my room. We sneaked with the door open and into the bathroom. I knew my boyfriend was at work and there's nobody else who had any business being in our house at 7am on a Friday, so I freaked out. I stayed silent and didn't move. I didn't want whoever was there to know I saw him, so I silently grabbed my phone and called 911. I didn't speak to the operator, I just stayed quiet and didn't hang up, hoping to alert them to send the police to my location. The operator must have traced my location because about 10 minutes later, the cops arrived at my house. As soon as I heard sirens approaching, the man in my house flew out of my bathroom and down the hall. I peeked from my bedroom doorway and saw him bolt into the living room towards the front door. The cops must have already pulled up outside because then I saw him run into the kitchen towards the side door. While he was in the kitchen, I took the opportunity to run to the front door to meet the police. The man managed to get out the side door, but a cop had been circling the house and managed to tackle him. I explained to the cops what happened and they took me to the station to make a statement. Turns out, the guy who snuck in my house was a wanted rapist. He had a thing for raping white blonde females in their 20s in the area. The cops think that he'd been watching me for a while as he knew when my boyfriend left and saw my car parked out front and knew that I was home alone. He had picked a lock on our front door. My boyfriend forgot to lock the deadbolt when he left and I'm just glad the police came when they did and the guy was caught. I'm also grateful for my neighbor's dog. If she hadn't woken up, I could have been that guy's latest rape victim. I bought her a bag of doggy treats when I left the police station. When I was 19, I came home from college to stay with my mum for the summer. She had recently divorced my stepfather and had moved from a house to a ground level apartment. One day, I was sitting on the toilet peeing if you wanted to know and I saw a light coming through the vent on the floor. Looking closer, I saw two brown eyes staring up at me. I screamed, threw a towel on the vent, and ran to tell my mum and boyfriend what had happened. They initially thought that I was kidding until they realised that I was genuinely freaked out. This particular complex had these weird locked crawl space type access points, and the police found that the vents had been pried open but they never found who did it. I'm assuming a maintenance worker. Needless to say, mum moved out quickly. After that experience, I always, to this day, check vents, floor or ceiling. This happened to me over 20 years ago, but still really creeps me out. This happened when I was 21, living downtown with my boyfriend. I had just found out that my boyfriend, who I had been with for almost four years, had been cheating on me. We were invited to a Halloween party that night and had initially declined the invite, but then I found out about the cheating and told him that I was going and that he could stay home if he wanted to. We were in the process of breaking up and dividing our assets. Anyway, the breakup is relevant to my frame of mind. We lived in a rather sketchy area downtown one of those brand new apartments built in a slummy area sort of things. And any other night, I'm the type who keeps the windows up and all the doors locked until I'm out of the area immediately surrounding our apartment. However, my mind was understandably elsewhere and I had both the driver and passenger windows down so I could smoke a cigarette. The first red light I came to on the way to the party was still in the shady part of town. I'm the first car at the light, so I have a full view of a 20-something guy crossing the crosswalk left to right in front of my car. Suddenly, he looks over and makes eye contact with me. I'm flicking ash from my cigarette out the window at this point and may have done a polite head nod that I can't remember. Next thing I know, he picks up his pace and walks over to my open passenger window leans into my car and asks if he can have a light. 
and when flustered, I tend to be polite. So, without really thinking, I hand him my lighter and was totally prepared to just pull away when the light turned green and let him have it. That is when, instead of reaching for the lighter, he reaches into my car and lets himself in, just sits down like we are old friends. At this point, the light turns green and I grab my purse and wedge it between my left leg and the driver's side door. Uh, apparently, I was more concerned with being robbed than the darker alternative. He thanks me for giving him a ride and I slowly pull away from the stoplight, cars are behind me, and then ask him why he got into my car. He replies that he could tell that I wanted to give him a ride and launches into an obviously fabricated story about needing a ride because his girlfriend had just broken up with him and left him stranded downtown. I tell him that I'll take him to the nearest gas station as I need to get gas. I didn't. This was the closest place to our location which was well lit and sure to have people. The gas station was only about six blocks away but it was the longest six blocks of my life. He tells me that I'm pretty and asks me if he can have some money so he can get a cab home. Like an idiot, I offer him the $4 in quarters that I keep in my car for the parking meters. At this point, I think I was just ready to make him stop talking and leave me alone. Instead, he starts throwing the quarters one by one down the cleavage of my shirt. What the fuck? I ask him to stop. He just laughs. Then I see it. The gas station. I pull in and tell him that we need to both get out so I can pump. He hesitates and then gets out. I have never locked my car door so fast in my life. I walk inside, telling him that I need to prepay. Instead, I find the first group of people that I can and explain the situation. At this point, a guy with the group that I am talking with comes in and tells his buddies that the guy is out there telling him that I am his girlfriend and that I accidentally drove away with my purse on top of the car. Um, no. The group of college kids ended up going outside, making him leave, and then sticking around until I was back in my car and on my way. I live in a cabin on about 50 acres of fields and woods with my mum. We've been enjoying a day of sitting on our asses and watching television. However, I had to mow my grandmother's yard this afternoon. I told my mum that I have a yard to mow today. And it went as follows. It's cooler outside. I guess it's a good time to get off my ass. Mum. Or you could just call and tell her that you'll do it tomorrow? Me. No, I I'm just going to get my things together and go. Then I proceed to grab headphones and go on my merry way. I headed down the driveway, top the hill. Lo and behold, there were at least 20 MS Highway Patrol cars in the middle of my field about 70 feet from my truck. I just assumed that our neighbor who has a history of cutting up had gotten himself into huge trouble with the law over drugs or something. When I was pulling out of the gate, I told one of the local cops that I'm the land owner and asked if everything is alright. He said, it's going to be, whatever that means. On the way to my grandmother's house, I called my mum and said, I don't know any other way to put this than there are like 100 cops in our field. She said that she's on the way to check it out. I called her a few times with no answer, assuming that she's talking to the cops or something. I knew that she'd be safe with all those cops, so I went ahead and started mowing the grass. Plus, my grandmother is only a couple of miles down the road. When I was about halfway done mowing, she called me saying that the troopers had nothing to say. But one of the local cops that we knew said that it was this guy who was wanted in Texas for shooting three people, killing two and injuring one. The guy drove into our field and shot himself after being confronted and surrounded by troopers. When I was done mowing, I headed home to pick her up and we drove back to speak to the last few troopers. I told them that I'm the property owner and asked if it was all clear and if everything's safe now. They said that they just moved the body and the car out, so it's clear. I said, Wow, all the way from Texas, huh? Well, be safe and thanks. 
we drove over to the site after the troopers left. Right behind our old pecan tree were a bunch of tire treads and a giant bloody spot in the grass. We're still in a state of what the fuck. Going by the press conference we just watched as I was typing this, this guy shot himself as I was going up the driveway. I didn't even hear the gunshot or sirens, but I remember having my radio turned all the way up. There are links in the description linking to the story. I broke up with the father of my three sons and consequently had to move a bus ride away from their school. I noticed this older guy at our bus stop each day, glasses, cap, backpack, always smiling, tall and in a very good shape for his age, late 60s I'd guess. He struck up a conversation with us and became a daily fixture, I'll call him Wes. So there is only two buses that serve our road, one with a seaside destination, the other finishing up at the quayside. Wes was usually quayside bound but as time went on, I noticed he used our seaside bus more and more. When I asked about this change of routine, he told me that he was visiting his wife in the convalescent home and she had broken her leg. I remember that I was sorry to hear that and he must have missed her terribly. We don't live together, I haven't, haven't, haven't lived with her in a while, you know I had a stroke and uh, I had to leave and it's uh, difficult to live with. We were together a long time so I still spent a lot of days with her. I wish I had picked up on the implications inherent in difficult to live with. I'm naturally uncomfortable with physical contact so I suppose this made me question whether it was my prejudice that gave me an uncomfortable feeling about Wes. He would pat me on the arm to emphasize his point. If the bus was crowded and we had to sit together, his leg would brush mine. I don't know, something was just off but I just couldn't pin it down to any one thing. I didn't like that he asked about the boys ages and school and repeatedly he asked their names as if trying to memorize facts about them but then I rationalized, hey the guy had a stroke, maybe he has to work hard retaining information. Bear with me, I'll get to the point soon. Weeks turned to months and Wes was a bit of a constant bus stop conversationalist, but I, as a protective mother, had numerous times reminded my beautiful boys that just because you see mum talking to somebody else does not alter the fact that they are a stranger. Wes was not family or even a family friend and they were not to interact with him in any way if I was not present. One day, Wes was quite animated. He told us, I'm a model railway enthusiast. His club was setting up for a big exhibition near the quayside above a general store. Wes was sure that my boys would love it and I should definitely bring them along. Maybe leave them to play for a couple of hours while I had a bit of me time. I said I'll check my diary. I did so and I was scheduled to work that day. I must point out that the me time bit was never on my agenda but I did mention it to my mum who was looking after the boys that day. In the end, she decided to go somewhere else, thank god. So it got to summer and we didn't see Wes as we weren't on the school run. Typing this out has reminded me about the fact that we sometimes saw him at other times. He lived in sheltered accommodation, seniors assisted living, overlooking our local shops. He would often be watching and waving at us from the window but not this summer. The new school year began and Wes wasn't at the bus stop. I wondered if he changed his schedule or maybe now his wife was recovered and he may be visiting via a different bus route but we didn't see him at the shops either. I knew he was old with previous history of a stroke. I hoped that he wasn't ill or worse. What I soon learned changed my opinion on this. Cut to the scene of a frantic banging on my door. It was my neighbor. Please, have you seen my girl, Lacey? She, she knows not to leave the street. Is she playing here? I'm so worried after what happened last time. I said that Lacey is playing out back. I just saw her. Her grandma filled me in about last time. 
the little girl, aged seven, is profoundly deaf and very adventurous, and had gone missing from the street. Police were involved, and you've probably guessed their first port of call was the sheltered accommodation, where a known pedophile lived. His name was Wes. Lacey was found there, playing with a train set. Wes was escorted from the area and prohibited from returning. That's why we hadn't seen him. That's why I hate model railway enthusiasts. And that's why if you approach me at a bus stop when I'm with my boys, then you better ask no more than if the bus already left. I grew up in a small city, so when I moved into the mountains in Colorado, I took the opportunity to go on a fair amount of walks out in the woods all around my house. For the most part, I would only walk the woods behind our house since we had a very large property. One day, feeling bored of the woods behind our house, I asked my parents and they told me that I could walk the woods across the street. I excitedly rushed out to go walking across the street. As soon as I got to the edge of the woods though, I was already a bit unnerved. On the ground, I saw the shell of a bullet. I felt especially frightened because I have a fairly irrational fear of guns, but I decided to go over my fear and continue on because the case was obviously old, covered in dirt and such, and we lived by a big hunting town, so it was to be expected. The next weird thing I came across was a pile of deer hair. I, obviously not knowing much about hunting, saw it and thought that a doe must have laid there when she was having her babies. At that moment I was excited, not realizing that the hair was most likely the result of a deer being shot in that spot. The final, weirdest and worst thing that I found was at a clearing in the woods, a clearing that I didn't realize wasn't a person's property at the time. As soon as I got out of the clearing, I saw a large block of styrofoam with two iron rods stuck through it to keep it standing in place, and it was full of bullet holes. Looking around I noticed deer bones scattered around and the bones of some other animals including a full set of some small animal bones laying on a rock beside the styrofoam. Confused and not quite sure what I had found, I decided to go and get my parents. When I got them to come, I first showed them the pile of hair and they pointed out to me that it was probably where a deer had been shot. Then I led them to the styrofoam and the first thing they pointed out was that we were right in someone's front yard. Mind you, it was a giant front yard, and the house was small off in the distance. After looking at the dead animals, we noticed two things. Not only did one of the animals have a chain around it, chaining it to one of the poles the styrofoam was on, but some of the animals I couldn't recognize at first were obviously domestic cats and dogs. And at the end of the day, all we could do was walk home. It sounds terrible, but the animals were obviously dead for a long time, and we believe they were killed by the crazy former owner of the property we were on. The owner was long gone, and the police force in our town was so small and poorly trained that they probably would have simply gotten mad at us for being on someone's property, and not really care about what we found. I'm sad that we couldn't do more but I genuinely believe no justice would have come of calling the police. My mum didn't have those crazy party years, as she got pregnant with me relatively young, so she saw this as her opportunity to do so. Usually, my grandparents or her best friend would watch me on the nights that she would go have fun, but sometimes there was no one available and my mum would throw some small parties at our place instead. I don't remember most of these, just small flashes here and there of our crowded living room and kitchen, or salt and pepper songs blasting in the backyard. My mum had this guy friend, and we'll call him Jeremy, who came to every party. I loved Jeremy, and my mum did too, partly because he was gay and she never felt threatened by him, and partly he also adored me. I was a three-year-old girl obsessed with anything Disney princess and every time I saw Jeremy, he would bring me anything cheap and Disney princess related. Anything from those growing sponges to crayons. This, of course, meant that I trusted and loved Jeremy. He would call me a chicken legs, which to a three-year-old was hilarious and insulting at the same time since everyone else had said that I was a really skinny kid. However, 
I delighted in the little nickname when he used it and would only answer to that when he came around. One day, during the summer, my mum was hosting a small barbecue and Jeremy had come over early to help prepare. It was just the three of us and my mum told me that she remembered Jeremy constantly checking his watch. She wrote it off as he was just making sure that everything would be ready on time. But around five o'clock, Jeremy suddenly pulled me into his arms, saying that I was being a bit fussy and wanted some juice. My mum hadn't noticed that I was being fussy, and to this day swears that I had been happily playing on my own. She says Jeremy took me inside, through the front door, and out into the front yard where another car was waiting without missing a beat. I trusted Jeremy, but to this day I'm so thankful that I started screaming my head off as the passenger door opened. Jeremy proceeded to shove me inside when my mother came rushing through the front door. My mother is not one to be fucked with. She's the toughest woman that I know, and in every sense, she's a mother bear. She came barreling out of the front door and charged across the lawn. Jeremy saw this and froze, pulling me from the car just as it sped off. My mum proceeded to ask him what the fuck he was doing. She already knew, but Jeremy fed her some bullshit of taking me to the store real quick because we were out of juice. He said that I had agreed to go, and he thought that it was fine since they were friends. My mum snatched me away and told him to get the fuck out of here and to never come back. You don't just take someone's kid without telling them, of course, and she never wanted to see him near her or me ever again. I don't know what instinct told me to scream as I had thought of Jeremy as a family member, but I'm so glad that I did. Wherever Jeremy was planning on taking me, there was no way that it could have been good, and some sick part of me wonders if my pet name had anything to do with that destination. Hey guys, it's the Grim Raider here. <laughs> well, it's been a long while since I did one of these outros, but hey, it's due to high demand, I thought, might as well. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, obviously, don't forget the usual, you know, drop a like. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you have to, I mean, you have no choice. You have to subscribe, all right? Um... Of course, drop a comment here and there because, you know, why not? You can. You have the power to do so. So why not exercise your your um, democratic right to leave a comment? Now, but in all seriousness, thank you very much for listening. Uh, and what I'm interested the most in is um, I know that most of you listen to these videos while, you know, trying to go to sleep or doing other activities as background noise or something. But in this particular video, um, as most of you, I'm sure, have seen it, there is a gameplay in the background. Um, obviously the audio is going to be this, you know, the usual stories, but tell me if you, if you enjoy these gameplays and, uh, you know, if you guys like it, then I'll, you know, implement these gameplays more. And of course, um, you know, play different games, whatever you guys request. So let me know, comment, you know, cause this is basically, um, this is me trying it out and seeing how you guys like it. Thank you very much. And, uh, you'll hear from me soon.